young bunny banks and by young bunny braes, where the sun shines bright on Loch Lomond, where me and my true love were ever once again, on the bunny bunny banks of Loch Lomond. Steep, steep side of Ben Lomond, where in purple hue the highland hills we view, and the moon glints out in the gloaming. Oh, you take the high road, and I'll take the low road, and I'll be in Scotland the fall of But me and my true love will never meet again on the funny, funny bikes of Lomond. Boy, oh boy, the Irish Rovers are always coming up with special treats for you. You know where we are? We're at the very beginning of the Highlands of Scotland, and we want to take you with us up there among the history and the great songs that the Highlands have to offer. So why don't you quickly run out to the kitchen and get yourself a wee warm glass of Scotch whiskey and step we gaily, on we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. You're going to enjoy yourself. Cade meal of falcha, that's Gaelic for a hundred thousand welcomes. Come on. A long time ago, when the earth was so green, and there was more kinds of animals than anybody's ever seen, they would run around free when the earth was being born. The loveliest of them all was a unicorn. There was green alligators and long neck geese, some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees. Some cats and rats and elephants, but sure as you're born, the loveliest of all was the As you wander through the Highlands, you're constantly brought in touch with Scotland's colourful history. This Celtic cross commemorates a massacre that took place here in 1692 when the Campbells of Argyll came and took the hospitality of the Macdonald clan, slept in their house and enjoyed their food, and after 12 days of hospitality, they put the Macdonald house to the sword, and 40 or 50 of them died right in their own beds, and the ones that escaped died in the snow. And it was many, many years before the McDonald's and the Camels could ever get together again. We have a great little song that we found here in the Highlands that will tell you the story. Glen Coe. the snow that sweeps Glen Coe and covers the grave O'Donnell. Was the flow that raped Glencoe and murdered the house of MacDonald? They came in the blizzard, we offered them heats, a roof for their heads, dry shoes for their feet. We wined them and dined them, they ate up our beets, 
and they slept in the house of MacDonald. Cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe and covers the grave O'Donnell. Was the foe that raped Glencoe and murdered the house of MacDonald? They came from Fort William with murder in mind. The Campbells had orders, King William had signs. But all to the sword, these words underlines and leave none alive called MacDonald. Cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe and covers the grave O'Donnell. Cruel was the foe that raped Glencoe and murdered the house of MacDonald. They came in the night when the men went asleep. That band of Argyles grew snow soft and deep. Like murder and foxes among helpless sheep And slaughtered the house of MacDonald Cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe And covers the grave O'Donnell Cruel was the foe that raped Glencoe And murdered the house of MacDonald some died in their beds at the hands of the foe. Some fled in the night and were lost in the snow. Some lived to accuse them who struck the first blow. But gone was the house of MacDonald. Cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe and covers the grave O'Donnell. Was the foe that raped Glencoe and murdered the house of On a July morning in 1745, a small boat landed at a point down here, and a young man stepped ashore. His name was Charles Edward Stewart, son of James, the third King of England and the eighth King of Scotland. He had come to lay claim to the throne of England. He had months earlier sent out the rallying cry to the clans to come and help him in his fight for the throne of England. He was a very disappointed young man because when he stepped ashore, there was no one here to greet him. As he sadly turned to go back, he heard the faint skirl of the pipes coming from this direction. And his heart quickened because he knew it was the Camerons of Lochiel, the largest clan in the area. He knew once they came, the rest of the clans would come. And sure enough, a half an hour later from this direction, came the powerful MacDonald clan. The Peabrock had been sent out and the Peabrock had been answered. Here, he raised his standard of the Stuart family, the standard of the Jacobites. And from here, he set forth and marched right through Scotland, right to 127 miles north of London in the town of Derby. There, false rumors, bad orders, misleading advice forced him into a retreat, little knowing that London was in a state of panic 
and George II of England had already made plans to flee to France. This tragic mistake gave England the opportunity to raise her forces to fight him. And they forced them all the way back, back to Inverness, Glengarry, Fort Augustus, right to Culloden. And there, the most glorious, romantic, and tragic event in Highland history took place. There, he suffered his most terrible defeat on the moors of Culloden. England had once again proved their superiority. The Jacobite nation was crushed, and the Highland clearances began under Cumberland. morning of 1746 right on this very spot in the highlands of Scotland at Culloden Moor 
Bunny Prince Charlie the Young Pretender gathered his clans together from all these valleys, and down in the hollow there they faced the terrible might of King George's Redcoats, led by a, a, a general called Cumberland. It was a very, very bad day for the Highland men, and they suffered a terrible defeat. The worst of it all was, just after the battle, there, there followed a terrible slaughter of the Highland men, of all the wounded that lay all around these fields here. And then, following that, Cumberland's troops went through the Highlands and, and caused great murder all through the clans. A lot of clans left after Culloden Moor and spread themselves all the way around the world. You still find traces of them today in Newfoundland and Cape Breton and Prince Edward Island. A black day for the Highland men at Culloden Moor, 1746. Should he no come back again? Will he no come back again? Will he no come back again? Better love ye canna be. Will he no come back again? Sweet the love rocks no done by. The Highlands of Scotland is always offering strange happenings to the rovers as we wander through it. One of the most unique sights in the Highlands of Scotland, of course, is the Highland Coo. And this is one of the, this is Morroch. He's going to eat my hand off for this cabbage here. And they're the most delightful domesticated animals. I'd love to take one back to Canada with me, but I don't think the customs would let me. There's a bunch of people down there below those trees. And I thought at first they were giant rabbits with horns, but on closer inspection they turned out to be some kind of Jacob sheep, they're called, with horns like deer. And we thought if you would we thought if you would vent your further on up the highlands with we might even see a stranger sight, my cousin Joe, singing a lovely romantic ballad called Will You Gang to the Highlands, Lazy Lindsay. Ride and be darling to be. Be for 
bride and me darling to be. Best coming home and the song in the air, light in the eye and it's goodbye to care. Laughter, oh love, and a welcoming there. I love my heart, my old one. Tell me, O oh, lands of the Orient Game, speak of the riches and joys of Cathay. Oh, but it's grand to be waking each day to find myself nearer to I land. It's west for home and the song in the air. Light in the eye and it's goodbye to care. Laughter, oh love, and a welcoming there. I love my heart, my old one. Where are the folk like the folk of the West? Canty and Cuthy and kindly the best. There I would hide me and there I would rest. And home with me ain't folk in I land. Song in the air, light in the eye, and it's goodbye to care. Laughter, oh love, and no oh welcoming there. I love my heart, my old one. After travelling through the Highlands of Scotland, I can now understand why so many Scottish poets wrote so many songs about how they have left their heart in the Highlands. Makes me feel that way anyway, and I enjoyed it very, very much. And as they say in this part of the country, lying may your lum reek, or as an Irishman might say in the Highlands, may you be half an hour in heaven before the devil knows you're dead. God bless. I've been over snow, I've slept up on crone, I've come by the way in stones as well. I've sunbathed on kinder, been burnt to a cinder, and many more things I can tell. Well, me rucksack has up been me pillow, and the heather has up been me bed. And sooner than part from the mountains, oh, I think I would rather be dead. I'm a rumbler, I'm a rumbler from Manchester way, I get all my pleasure the hard more than way. I may be a wage slave on Monday, but I am a free man on Sunday. I once loved up made a spot welder by trade, she was fair as the row and the bloom. And the bloom of her eye mocked the June moor and sky, and I loved her from April to June. On the day that we should have been married, I went for a ramble instead. For sooner than part from the mountain, I think I would rather be dead. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way. I get all my pleasure the hard moorland way. I may be a wage slave on Monday, but I am a free man on Sunday. So I walk where I will over moorland and hill, and I lie where the bracken is deep. I belong to the mountains, the clear running fountains, where the grey rock rise up rugged steep. I have seen the white hair in the gullies, and the curlew fly high overhead. And sooner than part from the mountains, I think I would rather be dead. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way. I get all my pleasure the hard moorland way. I may be a wage slave on Monday, but I am a free man.